Uh, this is the third uh, survey that I'm covering. Okay. Uh, from uh, I, I think it's your fourth fourth yes. one. Mm. Uh, and one thing that has not changed are the challenges. Now um, let's discuss each of yeah. them uh, specifically. Kandar, again, I'll start from you. Tax and tax regulation. You talked about tax regulation on the GST side, but uh, even on the tax rate side, Swedish companies in India uh, they are not very comfortable. If you can tell us specifically what are the issues that they face uh, regarding tax and tax rate related, uh, you know. I think I think uh, so. I, I I didn't we didn't pick up anything specific on the survey on on tax anything beyond GST. I think predictability and consistency. You know, mm -hmm. I think that that is still a challenge. You know, we we still find things popping out of the woodworks in states, for instance, right. I mean, we are facing a situation where there's some restriction on use of Tetra Pak packaging in a certain state right. because of some consideration that are completely not well-founded, right? Mm -hmm. So now we spend the better part of our lives dealing with that than actually dealing with how do we drive 10% growth. So I, I think for me, uh, it's that predictability and consistency that, that is the crux because that volatility is what dampens appetite. In my no, the, the service is that, you know, 65% uh, you know, see this as a problem pro problem area and it's more than last year. So has it become actually worse? Uh, no, I think, I think it's a question of interpretation. Mm -hmm. I think the tax laws have to be simplified a lot. Mm -hmm. So that's an issue. Mm -hmm. That's an issue which has been continuing for a long time mm -hmm. and I think we've brought it up to different levels in the government. They are looking at it. It's a complex subject over 60 years. Mm -hmm. We have had some very, very archaic laws. So today, a particular legislation in tax can be assumed to be 10%, mm -hmm. 20%, 40%. Right. Interpretation. So interpretation. Interpretation. Right. There can be three interpretations. Mm -hmm. Now that's the debacle sword hanging on each one's neck. Mm -hmm. So that's the worry. So that's where we as, a, as, a, as industry, we do not want Ten years later, we have a demand. Right. That's the that's the scary part, and that has to change in terms of ease of business after GST. That's my second point. That has to change dramatically. Can we have uh, comments from each of you on the kind of interventions that we would like to see regarding ease of doing business? The chief architect uh, on ease of doing business is right here. Uh, Mr. Kant is right here. If you can have comments from each of you regarding the the, the kind of interventions that you would like to see regarding the ease of doing business. Because I think. Uh, customs should be working seven days a week. Mm -hmm. why, do, why do we have Saturdays and Sundays off? Mm -hmm. I think to build in efficiencies, I think, so these are some very, very simple things which government could do. Mm -hmm. For customs, you know, for me, what's, what's really important is because we are, you know, wanting to abandon the protectionist mm -hmm. regime and, and it's, it's important to identify if we have to bring in raw material or goods that are required that cannot be sourced locally, then we should have some simplification of the duty structure or even reduction. And that's what we've been, uh, you know, representing for some time now, you know, and saying that it's not that we are trying to protect local industry or, or in, in doing so. So I think it will be good to identify in the coming years, given that we are having such an impetus on make in India, you know, what is what are those things that you need to bring in here and therefore how do you simplify that entire process from the myriad uh, approvals to also the rate of duty itself, you know, right. the duty itself, because you are doing that because you don't have a substitute or alternative mm -hmm. in India. Right. right. You know, uh, uh, Secretary Kant has taken the ease of doing business, uh, uh, you know, uh, as far as they have, he, has, he has initiated it in terms of the central regulations, but states are also not far behind. Yeah. From the state point of view, if you can give, give us some feedback on the kind of, uh, you know, things that the states could actually do to make your lives easier. From our side, I can see it's a very good example, at least from few states that we are interacting with. Uh, and you can see that it, this is moving. And this competition in between the states, I think, is a fantastic thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think if I can ask for something else, it's more to get an alignment in between the states. Mm -hmm. so it's a bit uneven yet. Mm -hmm. eh? And it depends too much on the willingness of, the, of each state to move things forward. Because for us, I see India as a one territory. Eh? Mm -hmm. I don't see India as different states because our investment plans, whether it is sourcing or retail, it's about the free flow of things around the country. Let's have two comments regarding, again, states. You know, uh, competitive federalism. States are vying for investments. Uh, how uh, has been the experience in the past one and a half years regarding that? Uh, how are states interacting with you regarding asking you to come and invest uh, in that particular state? And to my mind, phenomenal. <laughs> this has been the, the, the biggest game changer in the last 18 months. Uh -huh. I think they are booing you. Each mm -hmm. state is getting trying to be better than the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, the kind of red carpet welcome you're getting everywhere, mm -hmm. it's, we, we, I have not seen in my last 30 years. Right, yeah. And I think this will sort out a lot of issues automatically. Right. You want to yeah, I want to be on Kamal said. I, I think, one, I do agree entirely. Second, we need to make an agreement 
at country level, the society, the states, and the media, that this cannot be a fashion. Mm -hmm. This is not fireworks, because we don't invest based on fireworks mm -hmm. or in, in, in some summits and events. So we are have a, all of us have a long-term perspective. So really, for me, it's a, I, I am asking this uh, to all of us, that can we make an agreement in the society that the next 10 years, then we are not going to, 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 play, to play too much with that. And in that sense, I also ask you as a media, eh? mm -hmm. not only the government and not only the companies, that we have to help each other in iron out this, uh, uh, this uh, sentiment. So what are the two top things which will make you go and invest in a state? I think, I think number one is the relations with the government. Yeah. The, the credibility or the image or the perception I have of who's running it, mm -hmm. who's Absolutely. ruling at the top, what, uh, how industry friendly they are, that's, that's uh, really one. And then two is uh, local policies. I mm -hmm. mean, if there are some specific local incentives, initiatives that are being taken that to woo investment and those are fitting in with my uh, you know, scheme of things, and of course, the, I, I would I would differentiate one versus the other. You know, competition is always good in any part of the of business, but this one we always feel like a consumer who's spoiled for choice. Seventy percent of Swedish companies here are, are now not only producing for the domestic market, yeah. but also for the yes. export markets. You know, I'd like to have your comments uh, regarding this first. Uh, are Swedish companies, uh, in, including your company, seeing India as a export hub? Uh, and, and do you think that this will continue going forward? No, absolutely. I mean, I think that was the vision of Volvo Group when they set up shop in India. And I think that's, that's the journey we are taking. Mm -hmm. We believe that standardization of products mm -hmm. across boundaries, across geographies helps a lot. So whatever product is being manufactured in Sweden is also now being manufactured in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. Very happy and glad to say that the bus manufactured in Bangalore is going to be exported to a country to a region like Europe mm -hmm. and uh, where the quality standards are very high. Mm -hmm. So we are on that journey absolutely. Mm -hmm. We are building Euro 6 engines in India already mm -hmm. and, we, and, and the country is talking of, of leapfrogging from, from Euro, Euro 4 to Euro 6 mm -hmm. norms and more importantly the standardization of products and harmonization of technologies mm -hmm. helps a lot in the long run. Can we have a comment from Cam Phil and Yeah. Uh, for us, of course, uh, when we came into India, the intention was to take the Indian domestic market. Mm -hmm. The intent was there and it's still there. We believe it's, this is a great market, uh, surely going to grow leaps and bounds. But during the process, we notice if we really can produce a quality product uh, and can really serve it to the global market at a good cost and quality, why not? And surprisingly, six years down the line, our exports are more than the domestic market today. 60% mm -hmm. of our revenues are from exports and 40% uh, from the domestic market. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how it's going to move forward. Uh, I mean, if we can maintain this cost quality and if the domestic market also really grows up, uh, it's a win-win situation for us on both sides.